Hey everyone, this lesson we're focusing on ionic equations. Ions, remember, are form from anions, so negative ions and positive ions, which are either, if there's no water involved, will end up forming a lattice structure like this one here. When we mix um, silver nitrate and sodium chloride, both of them are soluble in water when they're separate. But when we mix them together, like in the previous lesson we looked at, we will form a reaction between the, so, uh, the silver and the chloride. And this forms silver chloride, which is insoluble, forms a white precipitate, and therefore we get solids in the water, making it look cloudy. So ions present before and after are okay because they're dissolved in the water. But when we mix them together, then we get a chemical reaction, which produces a solid. So we essentially get a reaction between only the silver in aqueous solution initially and the chloride in aqueous solution initially. And then when they react together, we get a solid formed, which is silver chloride. The sodium and the nitrate, uh, NO3, sodium, they're both uh, aqueous, in aqueous solution. So we write the AQ like remember before. And these aren't involved in the reaction because it's only really involved between the silver ions and the chloride ions. So what we say is that they they remain in solution and they are spectator ions. So spectator ions are not involved in the chemical reaction, but they just kind of sit around there making the electrical charge balanced. So they don't take any part in chemical reactions, so that's why we call them spectator ions. And we can write them in the different ways in our chemical equations. So ionic equations can have all of them, all the species, using neutral species as well. And in this case, it's you write here aqueous solution, aqueous solution, mix them together, we form the precipitate, the solid denoted by the S, and then these this is in aqueous solution. So really what what's happening in the water is that the sodium here is separate to the NO3 here. So they're separate ions in water, positive charge here, negative charge here. But because we know we're writing it as what, ha what the reaction is, this is the reaction here, fit bond, uh, bounding together. And if we didn't have the water to separate them, this would be bound together. But because water is separating them in the solution, we can write a little AQ here. So a complete ionic equation shows all the ions. So this one has no ions involved. This one shows all the ions. So this one's neutral species because there's no positive, no negative charges. Here we write, aqueous solution silver, positive charge, negative charge NO3, aqueous solution, positive charge sodium, negative charge chloride. All of these are aqueous solutions because they're in the water, so we have to write a little AQ to show that. If we didn't write the AQ, then you can't say Cl minus because it can't, uh, can't be in that state normally. On the other side of the arrow, what happens? We get the uh, solid, sodium, uh, silver chloride, this is sitting in aqueous solution still, positive charge, and negative charge aqueous solution. But we know that there's spectator ions in there. And a net ionic equation means that we don't have the spectator ions involved. So the overall main chemical equation here, we need to know is silver aqueous solution, chloride aqueous solution forms the precipitate, so uh, silver chloride in solid form. We don't include the, the spectator ions in a net uh, ionic equation. So these ones, the net ionic equation, is the most accurate depiction of what's really occurring in the in the water. Uh, so ionic equations are used for reactions other than precipitation reactions as well, and mainly used for the reactions that take place in solution, so in water or another solvent. Strong, uh, but we need to follow a few rules. So when we write ionic equations, we need to make sure that strong electrolytes are written in ionic form, weak ones in molecular form. But non-electrolytes are always written in molecular form. Insoluble substances are written as the formula, so the whole thing. And gases are always written in molecular form because they're, they're inert usually and they don't dissolve in water. 
Net ionic equations, remember, don't include the spectator ions. And equations must be balanced for atoms and as well as electrical charge. So using all these rules, we can uh, prepare a carbon dioxide uh, reaction with an acid and a carbonate and see what happens by writing the ionic equation. So carbon dioxide, the preparation of carbon dioxide is when you mix an acid with a carbonate. So if we have an acid, we usually write that as a positive H plus because that's the main species involved in the acid reactions and the carbonate here, solid. Add the acid, we get the sodium in aqueous solution, so positively charged. Uh, CO2 gas being performed, uh, produced, so we need to make sure we write the G in there so we know that the gas is produced, and water, liquid. If it's in the, the acid is added to a solution containing a carbonate ion, therefore we only have the carbonate ion here, not sodium carbonate. Carbonate ion in water plus the acid in water, we get the gas again and water again, and water is L, liquid. So the acid is written as a positive uh, proton, our H+, plus, and the anion takes no part in the reaction, so we don't need to put it in for the net reaction. So the similar uh, uh, reaction occurs with other acids, so hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid, it's the same thing. Preparation of hydrogen by the reaction of acid with a metal, we can write in ionic equations as well. And in this case, we're looking at zinc. Zinc as a solid, we add the acid protons, remember, H+, plus, and we get zinc ions, aqueous solution, because they're getting dissolved in water, and then we're producing hydrogen gas. So make sure you put the, the G in there for gas. So acid, when it writ is written as the proton, uh, H+, plus again, make sure we put that as aqueous solution, so we know it's an acid in water. And the anion here isn't involved, so we're not writing it in. So it could be hydrogen chloride, so HCl, the Cl isn't involved. So just make sure when you write ionic equations, uh, sometimes you need to make sure you write the net one, check the question, and if it's a net one, don't include the spectator ions. So with that, we can do some questions. Question six, predict whether a precipitate will form if the sodium sulfate solution is mixed with a barium chloride solution. If the precipitate forms, write a neutral species equation, complete the ionic equation, and net e ionic equation for the precipitation reaction. So here we need to do three reactions. So neutral species, remember that's everything, no charges involved. Ionic equation, all the charges involved. And net ionic one, no spectator ions. So barium sulfate is a precipitate, and so a precipitate will form. And the whole neutral formula is going to be Barium chloride plus the sodium uh, sulfate is going to form solid barium sulfate and sodium chloride in solution. So here, note there's no charges on anything. So the ionic equation, everything's in aqueous solution, so everything's separate. Barium is going to be separate in aqueous solution. Chloride is going to be separate in aqueous solution. Sodium and the sulfate all in aqueous solutions, or ions. And when we react them together, we're going to have a solid barium sulfate, which we need to write in molecular form. But then the rest, because they're all involved, uh, they're all ions in water, and so form aqueous solutions, we can write them as positive and negatively charged. And in the net ionic equation, remember, we're not looking at spectator ions. So we need to take out um, the chloride and the sodium. And really, the only thing involved is the barium here and the sulfate here to form the barium sulfate precipitate. Question seven, name two electrolyte solutions that will form a precipitate of calcium carbonate on mixing. Write the net ionic equation for this reaction. So make sure you write the net one, not the neutral one. So the net one doesn't have spectator ions. So we need to select a soluble calcium salt and a soluble uh, carbonate salt. And all nitrates are soluble, so we can say calcium nitrate. And all group one salts are soluble, so we can say sodium carbonate as a solution. So calcium nitrate, sodium carbonate, add them together, we get calcium carbonate, sodium nitrate. So the net ionic equation, remember we don't have the spectator ions, so we're really only looking at the precipitate here. Calcium is part of the precipitate, plus two in aqueous solution, plus the carbonate in aqueous solution. Mix them together, they form a solid. 
so make sure you put the S in here, and calcium carbonate. So this is a solid that's going to be formed, minus all the spectator ions because it uh, didn't ask for it. Question 8. Write a balanced net ionic equations for the following reactions. So hydrogen chloride with sodium carbonate forms uh, salt. Uh, carbon dioxide gas, make sure you put the G in for gas, and water, liquid. Always put liquid for the water. Uh, because it asks for net ionic equations, we need to then take out the spectator ions. So that's the NaCl. So we don't have that in there, and we really only have the hydrogen plus carbonate, and it forms water and carbon dioxide. So question 9. Write a balanced ionic equation for the following reactions of solu solutions from uh, potassium carbonate and barium chloride when they're mixed together. So in this one, uh, it asks for a balanced ionic one, so that means no charges on it, so, and also includes spectator ions. So we have aqueous solution, AQ, aqueous solution, AQ, mix them together, we get the solid precipitate, barium uh, carbonate, and the spectator ions. Uh, potassium chloride in aqueous solution. Question 10. Write ionic equations to represent the dissolution of lead iodide in water. So lead iodide, solid, and when we put it in water it's going to dissociate, so it forms two sets of ions, lead and aqueous solution, and two sets of iodine ions in aqueous solution. And the precipitation of lead iodide in water. So if it was the other way, if it was to precipitate out, we get the ions first, ion for lead, ion for iodide, add them together, it's forming a precipitate, so it's a solid. So we need to write the whole molecular formula plus the S to show that it's a solid. So just in summary, what we were looking at is precipitation reactions and how we're going to write them in ionic equations. Just make sure you, uh, you read the question and that if it says net ionic equation, don't put any spectator ions on it. And if it's balanced um, equation or neutral species equation, don't have any charges in it, so don't have any ions in it. And if it's asked for an ion one, make sure you put all the ions involved.